So I was I was the master of bench press, lat pull, bicep curl, bent over rows. So he did a great job strengthening my back, particularly mid to upper back, pectorals and biceps. And that is it. I did not learn how to deadlift or squat properly until I was 23, 24 years old. Now, I'm the perfect example of what happens to your body when you don't work your posterior chain when you're young. In my 20s, I had two different ACL tears, two different surgeries. And what is one of the most common ways we tear ACL? It's an unbalance between our quads and our hamstrings. So I had these strong quads from doing a little bit of running, a lot of wrestling, and zero hamstring, glute, and lower back strength. I didn't even know what these were until I was probably 25 years old, glute hamstrings. <clears throat> so a lot of my drive and motivation over the last seven years has been trying to learn to catch up from what people had when they were in high school. I've learned so much from Bigger, Faster, Stronger than clinics. I've learned a lot from Coach Moore. And developing that <coughs> proper posterior chain is one of the signature signature important procedures that BFS pushes you through. Learning the proper deadlift, learning a proper parallel squat, learning proper power clean are key. These five glute ham raises we purchased from Bigger, Faster, Stronger, a great deal. They are always part of our warm up. Our standard warm up is a dot drill, glute ham raises. Then we'll also do some light overhead squats. We'll do some jumping. Basic Bigger, Faster, Stronger concepts. My first couple years here, I just taught fitness classes. Well, I started learning about strength training and I started working my way into where I started training other programs. And the coaches started to trust me a little bit. About five years ago, we um, asked BFS, and they were nice enough with Camp Shepard and Rick Bojack to certify about 12 of our coaches. So they came to Mountain View, did the certification program. We started training kids with BFS. We still don't really get the recording. They taught us about the BFS computer system and the booklets, but we kind of got it. I didn't jump on board as quickly as I should. And then a year later, we did the Beat the Computer System. Beat the Computer System, where you put in your athlete's max lifts once you figure them out, and it generates computer reports and tells them how much to lift. And that was fine. We did that for a couple years after they had progressed past the BFS rating. Last February, I finally got converted to the booklets, and I'll never go back unless I possibly do this little <laughs> smartphone thing if I can figure it out where the booklets are basically on your phone. It sounds like you got an app coming out next week. That's pretty exciting. But the power in these booklets, once the kids have graduated from the BFS Ready program, is the lifting comes down to that individual. And so today, after you'll see these kids do a, a bigger, faster, stronger dog drill warm up, they're going to count each other's mistakes and they'll record that in their booklet. That is data. The kids can track their accuracy and their speed. Like, wow, if I would have been doing a dog drill when I was a kid and growing up into high school, maybe my ankles and knees would have had a lot more stability. My ligaments would have held a lot better. One nice thing about the dog drill is. You're getting a cardiovascular benefit as well. The proof is in the pudding. They can look back in six months from now and know where they stood and where they've improved in the doctrine. What you're helping to create with these booklets and the Bigger, Faster, Stronger is self-driven, motivated people. Well, what more can you ask when it comes to a strength training program? I noticed Pam said in our basketball program we're creating unity. Well, one thing that I'm passionate about, I've had a lot of success, but I've also had a lot of rejection, is not only trying to unify my wrestling team, but unify our entire physical education and sport programs. I don't understand why programs are training differently at a school. They all should be doing a core program like Bigger, Faster, Stronger. Well, if a basketball program wants to spend an extra 30 minutes on a plyometric routine they like, that's fantastic. We finally made some big breakthrough, and I've, I've faced a lot of rejections. But this fall, bigger, it'll, I, I've taught beginning weight training, advanced weight training, girls and boys, but for the first time this fall, our classes are labeled as co-ed, bigger, faster, stronger strength training. So here's how it works. We've got A1 and B5. 
Now, it's great for a coach. So let's say Randy was the basketball coach at Mountain View. I'll just take his assistant, Alan, who shadowed him for a while. So Alan has his own basketball conditioning class, B8. Guess where he pushed all of his basketball players to sign up for DFS? A1 on the opposite day. So right now, I've got about 15 of his basketball kids signed up for A1 BFS. So every other day, they're getting the BFS program with me. Every other day, they still have them in the basketball class. So A1, they get BFS with me. The next day in basketball class, he can focus on sprinting and cardiovascular endurance. And he's going to have more time for plyo boxes and things I just can't get to in a single class period. So right now, it's a win-win. We've got football, A4. I, we got Coach Wong bought in. He's actually the one that paid for all these BFS posters along the wall. He has been pushing and encouraging his athletes to sign up for B5, which is B1, BFS. Every other day, they're with me on BFS. Every other day, he still gets him in his football class. Is it tricky for some kids in their credits? Yes. But we are getting to the point where we are unifying our school in bigger, faster, stronger. So the, the lift we're going to show you is a parallel squat. And this is one of my peeves. Coaches that aren't certified, a lot of their athletes don't get low enough. Well, guess when that hamstring is fully engaged, guys? When are we developing those hamstrings? You're below parallel. That way you don't get two ACL surgeries like post right? Okay, we're going to have Austin be the squatter, and we'll just do the bar. We've got three spotters. I always tell my athletes it's a minimum of two spotters, but ideally we'd rather have three. And here's why. We've got our two side spotters. They're there to help lift the bar if Austin's in trouble. We've got our captain here. He's the motivator. He's encouraging. These spot, side spotters should also let Austin know if he's not getting to parallel. So let's say we're on a five by five routine. Austin go ahead and hits his five reps of squats. I'll shift those weights a little bit more to your heels, Austin. Good, he's squatting below parallel. He's keeping good posture. Harrison and Emily are there in case he's in trouble. Squats down, racks the weight. What Austin quickly does is he writes down, pretend like you're writing down your lift, and then we do our rotation. So now we can have Wiley go to this side, Harrison go here, Austin go to side spotter, and we can be the captain in the back. We'll see how Harrison's depth is on his squat. This is a team experience. Chest up, weight on your heels. Squat below parallel. Got to get one more inch. So what I wanted to do about five, six years ago is create summer strength training opportunities. Because when I got to Mountain View, there was one program that consistently lifted together in the summer. And you guess what that was? Football. It was the only program in the entire school, I promise you, that lifted consistently in the summer. And I thought, well, this is goofy. Okay, I'm not worried about them. They, you know, they get their kids here. I'm not gonna worry about football. I'm gonna step up and say, hey, I'm gonna offer a summer lifting program for every single athlete that is not involved in the football program. So let me tell you where it's at now, and I like the niche we found. It's seven weeks in a row. It's offered Mondays and Wednesdays at 7 a.m. It's offered Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. I have 40 people in the program right now. Some of them just go Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 a.m. Some do all four sessions. Some just do Mondays and Wednesdays. I've got a handful of wrestlers. A lot of my wrestlers are in football. I've got a handful of girls basketball, a handful of girls soccer, some track, some swimming, all over. I've got several adults from the community. It's exciting. Now what happens is, as you can imagine, some of them go on vacation or BFY or track. So I can't say all of you are doing this exact same thing because there are different points in the program. So we have this educative process where I say, once you've completed all your three by threes, then you go to five by five, then five, four, three, two, one, then 10, eight, six. So BFS has this nice variety of patterns. What's nice about the BFS program is there are six core lifts with BFS. 
Those are great. They got it. They know that they have to get the six core lifts in every week. But there's also spots for four variations. So the students who come four days a week, they're getting ten lifts a week. The students who come twice a week, they're getting at least six. I'm not including the warm-ups and such. Now, I give them some choice when it comes to the variations. The six core lifts for BFS are towel bench and bench. Well, I love the towel bench. It helps you break through the sticky point. It lets your AC joint rest. Box squat and parallel squat. Well, if you're like me and you do a parallel squat, you need about four days to recover. Your hamstrings are so tight. The box squat is you can do more weight and it lets those hamstrings recover. Well, you've got deadlift and power clean. The deadlift prepares us for the power during that posture. Those are the six core lifts. And then, within the booklets, we'll pass this kid. He barely started. He, uh, there's these spots for variations. Well, that's a nice thing because each coach has a little bit of their different expertise. So say you've got a coach that loves his bicep curls. Coach Moore, that's all he ever does is bicep curls. <laughs> I'm just kidding, he hates it. That's the look around. They can put bicep curls their variation. For me, the two squat variations that I push really hardcore are number one, front squat, because that helps the power. The second variation, I hope I don't do it offend Bob here, is I'm a huge believer in the snatch. For power development, once I started doing snatch, my wrestlers suddenly, their shoulders were incredible and they never got hurt. That, that, we love that, but for most people, that is considered an advanced teaching. Sure, exactly. You don't but teach it right away. Really, that's one of the best. Numbers. Oh, good. I wasn't sure when you brought up Olympic lifting. I'm glad you like it. I, I feel like you've got to pound the overhead squat a lot first, and then you get the snatch. So snatch is one of the variations that I push the most because you generate so much power from the ground and kitchen overhead. It helps that shoulder stability so much. The other variation that I push a lot are weighted pull-ups, and that's. One, I'm just, in wrestling, we do so many pulls, and so I'm a big believer in that. But a coach can come in, and their big variation could be clean and jerk. You know, their big variation could be heavy dips. Whatever it is, there's four different variation spots. So I think what happens sometimes is coaches, and I've seen this, they can be guilty of pounding their apples with so many things. Bigger, faster, stronger keeps it simple. We want you to focus on these six lifts. And if you get things rolling, we want you to improve on these 10 lifts every single week. Now, it's pretty exciting when, if you may see this one second, they're getting to week number, you know, 52. Sorry, no, it goes under 40. They're getting to week 25. And they've seen for seven weeks how that progression works. I had a cool experience this year. I got a couple of principals and teachers on BFS. And so they're coming in and they're doing the bullets. And we're comparing data. How much did you prove? 20 pounds. The most important thing with BFS is your total pound experience. So if you do a five by five, you might have lifted 150 more pounds. Maybe you did 30 more you said. You're, getting, you're helping these kids develop so much confidence because they're seeing black and white how much they improve. And I guess for me, I feel guilty looking back on my first four or five years with, without BFS. The accuracy of the data was not direct for the kids to see. In basketball, they know that they went from being a 60% free throw shooter to a 80%. Well, how much data do you have in your program? How, how directly can they see with BFS? It's because it's cool. But imagine, we, when we measure strength levels, when they don't do any lifting, that parallel squat probably drops 80 to 100 pounds for a lot of high-level athletes. They're not lifting the body. So I appreciate BFS and this opportunity to have this conference today.